Sportages. Sport gets smarter. Welcome everyone to this uh, new episode of the Sport Ages video cast. And today we are here to discuss all things football with Aksa Mushtaq. Aksa, who's here with us today, has a lot of global experience with football, despite just being 22. She has Pakistani lineage. She's from Bradford, England, and she's played varsity football in the U.S. And she has recently signed with the Nepoli, the Italian football club. So uh, congratulations, Aksa, and welcome to this interview. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Although, okay, so I've uh, briefly shared your profile. I'd still like you to give us a bit more detail about your involvement with the sport. Okay, well, I started um, football at a really young age. I don't really remember when it was. I just always remember kicking a ball about with my family, with my friends in a primary school, all that things. Um, so it was just, it was a really good time. I had family who played football, so I just always was like looking at them playing and I just really enjoyed the sport. So I just carried on playing and then I got into the teams that I wanted to get into, into centre excellencies in Bradford. And it was a really good standard, especially from me being at such a young age. It was really good clubs. And I just tried to progress as as the seasons went on and tried to go to better teams. And then I went to open age and then college. And now, and now here I am at Napoli. So... Right, right. That's, that's cool. Okay, so um, I would like to ask your family's involvement in this. Was it like your parents who supported you or was it friends or who was it? Like who was that driving force that like got you involved uh, right at the start? Yeah, I'd say at the start it was just friends because I had been playing football like in primary schools and things like that. But then after that it was family because without my family support I wouldn't be here today because it was always them who were saying, oh, carry on with football and let's try to find you a better team and let's do this and that. So it was always my family who I had, like, my backbone, basically, to make me carry on playing and always, like, and not stopping when I felt like I wanted to stop or it was getting harder for me, you know? Right, right, right. Okay, so um, hailing from Pakistan myself and, you know, just being aware of the culture sport is not really a very sought after profession for women I would say although that is changing now but uh, did you ever experience any negativity or discrimination or you know something of that sort like uh, not just at home like uh, from the Pakistani community from where you are or just like you know even abroad or wherever like could you share your experience with stuff like that yeah I mean Everywhere you go, you'll always have some sort of people around you that don't want you to do well and do what you want to do because it's not in the norm of how people should be. And I've always had that when I was younger. Being from Bradford, it's quite a, um, a Pakistani area, I'd say. So obviously a lot of people didn't respect the fact that oh, I was playing football because I'm a girl and things like that. But at the end of the day, if, if I enjoyed what I did, I didn't affect them in any way. So I just wanted to believe in what I did and I didn't see anything wrong. If my family didn't see anything wrong with it, I don't see why anybody else should see that I'm doing something wrong, you know? And although people have discriminate, like is, are getting discriminated against every day, and things like that, I think I've had my family support, so it's been okay for me. Like the odd people say, why is she playing football? Why is she doing that? But to me, it, it doesn't really matter because I have the support I need. And other than that, it doesn't bother me really. Well, I'm glad you're very lucky, I would say. Yeah. Bless. Yeah, for sure. um, Okay, so another question is that since like you had, you know, like a lot of uh, global exposure, you've played in, I believe, three countries now, you know, like mm -hmm. starting out from Bradford and then you played at um, Lionel Ray University yeah, in Ryan, yeah. Carolina. Yeah, and uh, then you, so you have like that varsity football experience as well. And then and now you've recently signed with the Italian club, Napoli, which is a big deal. 
so uh, so you know like how would you compare your experience playing playing football in like these three different countries and just like could you compare contrast the sport everywhere well i think it's really good because each country i feel like has its own specific area of football that they have excelled in so like in england i'd say like tactical and like more quick feet and things like that and in america it's more speed and like fitness and now come to napoli it's more strength and holding the ball and things like that so it's just a lot of different aspects of your game that you have to work on so the first like couple of months i'd say is like the hardest because you're trying to get used to other people's culture of football and their way of playing so since i've been since i've been here it's been it's been hard because i'm not a big player and strength is not my like ability, like best ability should i say but it's really good to work on the things that you are not um the best on like your weak spots because going to these different countries you have to do that in order to play and be at your best so that just improves you as a player overall as well so i think it's really good having different levels and different abilities and things to work on no matter where you go and the coaching as well is also different so obviously every coach is different so every coach has their the good things that they have and they want to work on so you get the best of so many amazing coaches and what they want to and how they want to like bring the best out in you is is good to see like it's really good right right um is there any uh football any coach any um football coach or any mentor that you came across uh during your time in all these different countries playing these different kinds of games uh anywhere that you remember or somebody who just really motivated you pushed you or something like that i mean in america i had the same coach for four years and he's i'll always remember that because that was the best like four years in terms of in terms of everything really but in terms of me as a player like if you saw me in the first year compared to the last year completely different player and i'd say that's down to my coach i mean we had like a love hate relationship and that was just because when he pushed me i was always like why are you pushing me so hard but he pushed me because he knew what i had in me and the last year you could see that that's what came out is like the best of, the best part of me in playing football and that's why i did so well is because i had him and even other assistant coaches there who just pushed me to my absolute limit and more than what i thought i was i even had in me so i i will always be thankful for that right 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 um all right so um currently you're signed with the uh, the italian club napoli so could you describe like what that meant to you and you know just that like how did you like how did the opportunity present itself to you and did you aspire to play club football like what while you were i believe an undergrad um in the us did you aspire to play club football or did you like have different plans for yourself for the future and how did all of this happen Yeah no so since i came out of uh, obviously because of covid um in march i couldn't like fully graduate i mean i graduated but i didn't have a graduation ceremony and i missed a couple of year uh, a couple of months sorry but um ever since i my last year was over in terms of football i've always wanted to go pro and i've always thought like that's what i had in my mind the whole time i was in america and things like that so that's always been my mindset but once i got out of college i didn't know realistically if it was possible to be in the top league because i've just come out of a d2 school and i mean i did really well and i i do believe in myself but just realistically i just didn't know if it was possible at that time for the first year you know but then i got um i have an agent now from sports management worldwide and he was very capable in handling everything for me and he's always been there for me the past like few months and he saw that this opportunity came up and they needed a player like me and or they wanted a player like me and I just jumped at the chance really because once I found out obviously it's just such a big club and my first pro contract in a first league in Italy is just it's just amazing really so I never I never really give it a second a second thought honestly because I realized how big it was and it how big it could be for me if I perform well so that's um yeah so it's, it's really good hopefully it'll it'll be a good year Uh, right okay so is there any footballer like you really look up to uh specifically if it's a female footballer that you have you know ever since you were a little girl 
playing the sport, was there anyone that you really looked up to or somebody who inspired you and somebody who motivated you to pursue the game? So could you share that with us, please? Yeah, well, mostly when I was younger, honestly, I was, I've always fought at Liverpool. So in terms of men, I, uh, Steven Gerrard was always like a big person for me. I just feel like his leadership and how he is on the field and the way he just controlled every game is just amazing. And I feel like me leading up to be wanting to become a better leader and on the pitch and off the pitch, I just aspire to be like him and the way he was with with Liverpool really. So that's that's the biggest person I'd say really. Right, right. Um, also, okay, so uh, with the coronavirus situation and, you know, this pandemic imposed lockdown, it's obviously been very different in every part of the world. So where were you during this lockdown and what was your uh, training routine like and what was your, um, you know, your, like, did it put any, like, uh, impediments to, like, your future plans or did it um, stop something that you had uh, going on or something like that? I believe you were uh, still an undergrad at that time. So, I mean, obviously, education aside, like the sport, how did it impact uh, you, your sport? It was hard because obviously being in March and I thought I was going to be, I was going to play semi-professionally in California and live there for three months. So it that was supposed to be a really big stepping stone to me playing professionally and carrying on playing really hard and training really hard in the summer to get a really good team. And since I had to go home in March, I thought like, oh gosh, like what should I do now, you know, because I wasn't training with a team and training on your own is, is okay, but there's only so much you can do and it's not the same, you know, because um, playing football is, on your own is not, obviously it's not the same as playing with a team or with other people and I didn't really have anybody I could play with. So I started doing one-to-one -one coaching with a couple of um, coaches and that was made all the difference because it was intense it was with me for an hour two hours a day and I was just focusing on everything that I needed to focus on in like an hour and two hours time every day and I was I was working on my own I was working with coaches so in that sense it helped me a lot and I'm glad I did that because without that I feel like I would have gotten slower or gotten like lost my game a bit because it's been so many months you know but since um but since I did that, I think it was really good and it helped me a lot. And I just had to focus on being the best I could be and the fittest I could be. So when an opportunity did come up, I was ready because I never knew if it was going to be in a, in a day's time or in a month's time. So I had to make sure I was fully focused on being ready for when a team would want me to come try out or anything like that. So, yeah. So I just I didn't let I didn't let COVID affect me in a way because I was at home with my family. It was nice to spend time with with them because I haven't had such a time with them because I've been in America for so long. Um, so it was nice to, to be at home, have a, a family environment, but also work on what I needed to work on as well. So it was good. I liked it. Well, I'm glad that uh, that situation worked out in your favor. So that's Thank good you. to know. Right. Okay. So um, now that you are a um, player who has signed for a club, I want to know like what is like your what is your training routine what is your daily routine what is your training regime how does a club footballer 22 year old club footballer's life look like daily life look like? well now we so normally we practice twice a day so that kind of takes up a lot of your time that you're practicing then you're resting you're eating and you have practice again and so that honestly takes up a lot of your time. Then we have meetings as well for if we have games, we have analysis before and after the games. So you have to watch the games that they've played before and analyse what we have to do. So that takes up a lot of your time as well because you're looking at so many videos of, of the players that you are playing against and the team you're playing against. And then once you've played the game the day after, it's back to looking at that game, what you did wrong, what you did right strengths, weaknesses, points like that. So, and then the new weeks ahead and now you're focusing on the game again. So it's, it's a lot, like you have a lot of training and, but you have a good amount of rest time too because they know how to train you well and make you eat the right foods that you're on nutritious plans. And so it's all, it's all above board and it's really professional. So I really like that, that sense of it, yeah. Um, okay, another question. Um, what is your favorite football tournament 
and like any specific reason why this one is your favorite like in terms of what i played in uh I, okay right okay any tournament that you played in like any significant moment in your career and then i'd also like to know like um any like international football tournament or is it like club football or league football what is it like one tournament that you would never miss oh i'd say i'd say league because that's the most important because it means that you're the most consistent because like other tournaments like championships and things like that it's more knock you get knocked out or like you only have three or four games and then you're like the winner and that could be based on how you perform them three or four games but it's not the whole season so it's not consistency it's more how you played in a, a few games which is still good but i think winning leagues is more important because it shows you are the best team overall and that you you've been consistent throughout the whole season so i'd say i'd say league play for sure right so any one league that's your ultimate favorite well, i mean that i've played in i'd just say in, in america for sure like um uh, the SAC is what it's called that was a really good league it was really um intense because you never knew what was going to happen with the teams from the top to the bottom it was never an easy game because every team had had different um aspects about them that you had to beat so it was always it was always a race to the end and i'll always remember the first couple of seasons like we were counting on other teams to lose and we were watching games and it was just amazing to see like us win and then another team lose and then us win the win the trophy at the end so it was honestly like the best feeling ever really that that sounds cool that sounds cool yeah um okay aksa so is there any advice that you would want to give to any um pakistani girl pursuing football yeah i mean or just any just just any any young girl 20 year old 19 year old young girl pursuing football professionally like is there any advice you'd want to give her just to keep working hard and not really give up when things get rough it's obviously hard because i've been through rough times myself where i think am i good enough am i not like who knows but if you keep on at it and keep having if you have one person supporting you or if you support yourself you don't need many other people you know because everybody's always going to have something to say about you but you can't really like that affect you and if you want to do something that's like out of the extraordinary you should still do it if you think you can achieve it and you should believe that you can achieve it you know um and i just feel like if you want to play football go do it no matter what anybody says or even not football anything if you want to achieve your dreams and just work as hard as you can and hopefully one day you can get there so all right thank you thank you aksa Um, no any other message you'd like to give out to our viewers or anything of the sort floor is up for grabs you may no i just thank you for watching obviously it's different doing these interviews and things like that i never thought i'd i'd be at this stage today so i appreciate everyone supporting me so thank you thank you thank you for joining us